is what's the impact of uh, PrEP going to be on all sexually transmitted diseases, including hepatitis C, and and on drug use in the context of sexual activities that could enhance the transmission of any of these infections. Well, we got to get we've got to get approval for, for PrEP, and I think that that is a huge problem that we have as well. Is is you know the U.S. has PrEP approved, we don't, and so we are not even going to be able to study PrEP in this country uh, until we're able to 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 get access to it. Um, how is that going to change things? Well, I think it can change things to a degree, but PrEP isn't the total answer. And so, you know, PrEP happen, helps in one dimension, but patients still got to be careful out there. And we have a syphilis epidemic and PrEP ain't going to stop that. Uh, and it's not going to uh, stop hepatitis C and other things that are transmitted. And it's how to use PrEP properly. And, and that's something we need to understand as well. We need to understand what are the dynamics that are happening in those circumstances and, and how to offer harm reduction. You know, like PrEP is a form of harm reduction in the situation where we can't, you know, we can prevent an infectious disease. Well, we have to think about the same thing, you know, generally, I think, about hepatitis C in, in injection drug users and in people who acquire it through other other ways. Well, having the drug is not the entire answer. Having the drug is important, but it, it will also be important that patients who are prescribed PrEP or given PrEP are counseled appropriately and understand that this is a drug that works when you take it. And uh, so there has to be a big teaching element. And I think implementation science is going to be really important to figure out what is the best way to deliver it to our particular patient population in Canada. Finally, having something that we can do that can prevent HIV infection, that's, that's you know, in populations who are really at risk, that's fantastic. But we have to message that, I think, with not only not just a cautionary message, but an, you know, an intelligent message about how do we actually maximally use that for every for benefit that it will be sustainable.